a higher bent and welcome to one of my now getting familiar interviews. Um, Ben, uh, I, I always knew, knew you as one of the heads of the Swedish Public Services, but you've moved on slightly since then, haven't you? Yes, I retired. Uh, when I was 66, I, I decided to, to stop working and live a quiet, uh, alone life with my wife. But the COVID came, so everything we had plans to do, traveling around the world and so on, it stopped there. And then I realized I had to have something to do. So I started to work uh, in an NGO uh, called Scopi Skåne. It's a work integration social enterprises. So we are working actually with people with mental illness and and uh, we have a lot of enterprises who is a member of this uh, work integration social enterprises who give support to people with uh, mental illness, mostly with mental illness, but even some intellectual problems also. So that's what I'm doing today. So I, I work perhaps 10 hours a week or something like that. I somehow That's... knew you when you said you were going to retire. I, yeah. I knew it was going to be like Muhammad Ali, and you would never, you know, you'd never quite be able to manage to do it. So um, it doesn't surprise me that you've started something new. What I want to do though is go back a bit, and when I say a bit, is when we both didn't have grey or white hair, and 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 when we first started off, and and actually ask you what got you started in supported employment. Well, it, it's that's a long story because it's. Uh, uh, I was one of the founder of Support and Employment in Sweden, and we started up at the, in the Public Employment Service, uh, 1993. Actually, uh, we were a, a couple of uh, persons who went to to the US for a study, a new method that we had heard about, and that was support employment. So we bring it back to us and we sat down and said, well, this could be something for us. Uh, and we started a small, small business with uh, support employment inside the uh, public employment service. And over the year, that uh, program was um, development. So when I left uh, 2019, then I think we were Europe's uh, largest uh, support and employment service. We had more than 900 job coaches on that time. That was one one big sort of expansion. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you went to America. Who did you see in America when you when you went there? Uh, we visited uh, Michael Callahan, of course, in, in New York. And we were at the um, Richmond uh, University also. And we visit, visit a small town, uh, Lebanon, upside uh, Boston. So we were actually there for three weeks and, and speaking to people uh, who worked with the uh, Supported Employment Program and also met a lot of uh, clients. Uh, and we have a lot of discussion with them. So, so and, you it, know, it, it was... It, uh, on that time that you, when you go home, it's it's not so easy to connect. And there was no videos and no one, so on. So, yeah. Oh, and I, I know I, um, I, I just recently saw a YouTube version of the Mark Gold Associates. And, and yeah. I was thinking back at the time is when someone had a video and said, oh, we got a video of this. And, and, and it was quite exciting. But um, yes, it was very different in those times. No mo mobile phones, yeah. no, no Twitter, no Facebook. But it was surprising how actually the, the, the community started. And um, knowing EUSE as I do so much is, I know it was formed properly officially in 1992 mm -hmm. uh, as a Dutch organisation. Were you one of the founding members or were, were you one of the original people starting it or did you come on a little bit later no i, I was one of them who started it right yeah and and when we started that in sweden we realized that the norwegians with greta wangen yeah. also started at the same time so we didn't have heard about each other before but uh, we connected quite easily with norway it's quite close to sweden as you know 
So we started to, uh, to develop uh, support and employment together with Norway, actually. And I think this is really one of the benefits of the European, you know, European Union support and employment is the way that we could connect with each other. Um, it was always a shame for the English that we weren't part of EUSE for so many years. And, and I think it was 2002 when uh, I re, uh, AFSI rejoined with myself and Hugh. Um, and that's when I first got to know you uh, then. And you were in the lofty position then as either were you a secretary or vice president. I've forgotten what, what your title was. Vice president of the EU. Yeah. Mm. Which you always did an incredibly good job. It was, it was um, you know, at, at that stage, I, I think a USC was actually starting to be starting to become effective and yeah. and become a really useful organization um yeah, that, i think that the the key point for you was when we we stopped to compare each other and started to work together right because we have to realize the system and the legislation and the rules are different in every country and that's that's not meaningful meaningful to to discuss that you have to have to face the, the the rules in your own country, but we can do a lot of things together. I I, I think so, and 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 during my time, I I think there's there's many many similarities. I'm really proud of what uh, European Union Support and Employment has has done. You know, it's it's got its two two toolkits. It's got the toolkit in self employment as well, and now it's developed the quality standards, the SEQF quality yeah. standards. Yeah. And I think what is good about that is that 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 says that's a standard of what supported employment is, because yeah. I think we all face within our own countries many people who tell us what supported employment is, and we know that that isn't what it is. And and I think you know you've been responsible for for getting that sort of cooperation going, which is which was so important. Which is the thing that I always sort of felt when I met with you is how helpful you were in 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 moving things along and 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 incorporation and and getting me to understand as a british person how a european union supported employment would work yeah and and that, I, I think that's important because uh, and i was uh, quite surprised when you contacted me or and did said you want this interview with me because uh, I, I was thinking about the work that we have done in the US and I see what's happening now in Sweden. I think it's happened in many countries that uh, that things are going in in a wrong direction for, for the clients that we are working with, the people that we are working with, because uh, now the authorities, they uh, put some pressure on on the organizations to be more, as they say, cost effective. And uh, that means that I, I can see that even in Sweden, I can see that uh, organizations who are using the supported employment program is, is now doing cherry picking because they want to be effective. So people, they won't choose people with mental illness or intellectual uh, problems because it takes too long time. And so we are back in the 1990s, I think, in, in uh, some way. I, 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 I also see, uh, I also can see that uh, many of the job coaches is sitting more hours at the office, if you understand what I'm meaning. Mm. And so, support employment is a, is a support even up to the workplace. But I can see the office time is now more than the time they put in in the workplace, and that makes me very worried about what they are doing. I, I I've often described this as pushing a boulder up a hill, and and and. I saw it just slightly before you, and and that was in 1986. And I, I I've seen recessions, and I've seen the way different countries approach something. Um, I've been 
we've obviously had lots of concern in the UK about how they procured and how they bought supported employment and how they actually brought that along because what it meant is when you were calling about cherry picking which i think to explain to other people that means helping the the the, the, the candidates that are easiest to place rather than the ones yeah. that are harder to place yeah. we saw that 10 years ago in 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 the united kingdom and and, and i think organizations like myself at status employment we we took a a, a real decision to know that we were going to have a hard time to actually carry on working with those type of uh, people because it was just so important not to actually ignore them. Um, and then from there, I've seen other other countries and, and, and I see it's also now happening with yourself where it seems to be, let's look after the people who can find their jobs easier and then other people will get their jobs. And that's never been the case. And I think the one area that I think supported employment works amongst all others is that there is a line in the sand that says about zero exclusion. Mm -hmm. And zero exclusion is about if you have the funding, you can work out the funding, then no one should be excluded from any employment. And that's been the biggest value in my heart. And, yeah. and 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 the biggest driver and, and and I can see from your part of view then you would also be worried about this as well. Yeah, I am. I am absolutely because I have worked all my life more than thirty years with support employment at the public employment service. That is a uh, is an authority, and and we had uh, for many years said that we should work with people who who needs support or employment to get a job. Because uh, it was that was when support employment was created for that that kind of persons who is unemployed, of course. But it isn't so today. Today they are cherry picking and and choose people that e that is easy to place. Uh, and uh, somehow we have to go back. I think we have to sit down and go back to what we thought about from the beginning. Yeah, I I, I think it's it's always good to have a reset. Um, and I know um, at the Barcelona conference, Hugh Davis will be speaking at the Barcelona conference, and I think, and also Mike Evans. And I think it will be good to be looking back a bit about why we started this in the first place. And and I started this to help people with learning disabilities. Mm -hmm find employment and, yeah. and have a valued job. And and I think it's something that when I talk about the analogy of pushing a boulder up the hill, it means that you need a lot of people pushing it and helping. Yeah. The one thing I am hopeful about is the amount of good young people that I am seeing in the UK who are taking on that baton from people like myself. And I'm I'm really quite impressed about the ones that I would call the have the fire in the belly to to actually say that they they want to they 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 want to challenge the system and I, and I mm. think that's really really important and I don't know whether you see that in Sweden with with the training programs that you've been having. Yes, I, I can see that, that as you mentioned, but um, and and uh, there is a movement. I. I, I I can say that there is a movement with young people who wants to to work on, uh, with support and employment in a more decent way and what and what we are doing today. But uh, the problem is that uh, we are in a situation in Sweden that you have been for many years that we are started to procure a uh, procurement service. Uh, uh, so there are coming in a lot of new companies who is yeah. even social companies they say they are social companies who is uh selling their services to to the municipality and to the authorities and uh, <clears throat> some of them is just in there for the money i i, I think this is a case in the, in the, in the yeah. uk we can say quite safely um since around about 2009 in in our welfare to work market there's been an awful lot of companies 
that are very big organization, often dealing with our car parking and our prisons and all yeah. sorts of different things, and are also commissioning welfare to work services. But they have to give money to shareholders. And um, for me, it has a very, very simple analogy. It's almost like um you know it's almost like cutting drugs. First of all, um, one organization takes 30% off for for yeah. their efforts and then they subcontract to someone else and another 30% is taken off and finally only about 30 40 pe- percent goes down to the goes down to the candidate and that's not good yeah. enough and it's something that I am pleased about in the you know in in the remaining terms that I'm around with the European Union of support employment is uh that we are interested in looking at procurement because we can learn from some of the mistakes that have happened in the UK around some of the things that we feel have not actually been helpful. Um, some of the innovation that has gone on despite that. Uh, but also I know in Belgium and I know in Sweden and I know at times in Austria, this idea that private organisation have the answers I'm afraid that is not the case, is if you're giving 30% of your money or more away to shareholders, that means 30% of the money goes to goes to, yeah. to make a profit. I, I honestly don't believe that this is a type of business that we should have about making a profit. We should be about what the person is requiring and that person-centered view of what is needed for the person and how we can put the services in. And I feel that that's something that is in my heart. And if I can be leaving that as a legacy for supported employment, that we actually believe that it's about all about the person and, and keeping it real, as as was once said in the British Association of Supported Employment, that's so important. Yeah. And, and, and what we can see in that, uh, what's happening here is, that also, uh, when I was running the, the support and employment program at the Public Employment Service, we said that a reasonable uh, amount of people that you are working with in a year is around 25 persons. Yeah. That, that's a reasonable. Now I can see that some of, of the job coaches have 50, 60 persons that they are working with. And then and, it's not and, supported employment and it, it, no, it, no. it would never be part of the EU SEQF quality standards. And and I think this is why the quality standards are the key going forward. So we know what organisation is really dealing in supported employment. I mean, if you think about the 2025 candidates, that came about not out of anything other than that was the most efficient way that you would be working, that, that, that helped more people get into employment. And it yes. wasn't done because we wanted to be kind to employment consultants, but we wanted the employment consultants to be to be effective. And yeah. if they've got too many people to be working with and supporting. Mm-hmm. They cannot be effective, and if they're not effective, they're not doing their job. No, and both you and I know that the things that what's happening when you're working with so much people is that. You, you are not staying on the workplace. You came out in the morning, 8 o'clock, and be there to 9 o'clock, and then you move away to, to another customer. So if the person needs support at the workplace, they don't get it. Yeah. Matt, I'm interested, do you ever do the job support yourself, or were you always management? I have done myself, yes. Uh, but that's a long time ago. But yeah, I, have, yeah. I mean, I, I just wondered if you've got any, any good stories about any of the first people you supported. Yeah, I can. Uh, many things happen. So, um, you know, we have winter in the, in, in Sweden and uh, before yeah. the uh, uh, environment discussion, they are uh, when they were eyes on the roads, they they throwing salt, salt on the roads. Right. And I was there with a little client on, on the business in a shop. And he was told to, uh, on where the uh, outside the, the shop, he, he should throw sand and salt so the people was not fall, falling on a slippery ice. And so he went into the shop and collect all the small packets with salt and put it on, on, on the road outside. So, uh, and that's a, that's a that's a story 
that's a little bit funny, but they also tell us oh, what I didn't do as a job coach, what I should do uh, to explain for him, this is not the same kind of salt uh, that you use on the food, so that they use on the ground for a sleep or ice. So that's I, uh, I, that's I, I, I think. I, I think when we we started we were we were often making things up as we went along and and uh, I mean in in today's environment I think it is great for job coaches now and 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 as I'd like to call them employment consultants they have to they have got good training I know in Sweden you have got good training mo modules for people wanting to do support and employment as we have in the UK and um, but I do remember many many times some of the things that I. I I got into a, a mess with and and usually I got into a mess with because I hadn't done either my vocational profile right and my job analysis right. I hadn't really explained. I, I remember working with a young autistic man in Putney in, in the UK and everything seemed perfect about the job. He worked in a post room of a company at the time was International Computers Limited. They They don't exist anymore, but... They were rich enough to have a 17 floor building uh, on the River Thames. Beautiful location. Perfect. Everything seemed fine. My, my candidate was absolutely obsessed and, and, and happy with geography. So the idea that he could work out which zones the letters went into and there was a lot of international mail they had. And he had to then deliver mail come in. The only one thing I hadn't worked out was that he was scared of lifts and mm -hmm. so we started the job and then the poor person and me had to be climbing up 17 floors by the steps because we couldn't go up by the lift and it was a very very quick reminder to actually remember to do a proper vocational profile yeah. and and yeah. and when you got it wrong you realized you weren't just getting it wrong for you you were getting it wrong for the candidate as well and and sometimes would have serious mistakes so folks out there make sure that you 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 do the processes correct because if you do the processes correct it will save an awful lot of problems yeah yeah and and that's coming down to our, us uh, as a job coach uh, you have to face those uh, problems that you you you, you have because you have to be at the workplace for, for just those two examples that we are speaking about now. You can't see that if you're not on the on the workplace. No, I, I, and I think there's nothing to replace this type of one-to-one -one support, certainly for people with learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. and, and I worry that there's a thing in England at the minute where the government are saying we can put disabled people to work at home. And I have a real concern about the reason that people with learning disabilities wanted to work was because of socialization, because they were isolated and they were socially excluded. And just by saying you can work at home does not help on looking at that exclusion. And, and, and we need to be thinking a lot smarter as yeah. countries and organizations about how we work with people um and certainly people with disabilities deserve better than some of our leaders certainly in the uk are where they are trying to force people to work from home without actually thinking about the whole picture and and i think it is a concern and sometimes i feel like i get old and i worry about ai and i worry about all of the other areas and what i do want to make sure is that people with disabilities are included and that yeah. they are part of the answer and they're not a problem. It's not a problem. It's about being part of the solution that is for everyone, including themselves. And it, it does annoy me when we get politicians who come out with comments that are degrading. And, and when I first started, we would have fairly degrading comments about people with disabilities. And I hear it again in 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 certainly in the UK. I know the UK has taken a, a, an odd turn, but we we hear it that here, and and it concerns me greatly. Yeah, it is because we are once again uh, looking 
to lean on too much of the the digital uh, development development uh, because uh, uh, both you and I has worked uh, with uh, supporter employment and people with different kind of disabilities long before the computers stepped in and took over the labor market because we we thought in the in the early nineties that the, the computer will change everything for everybody. Yeah. And surely did, but we can also say we, we thought that uh, now in the early nineties we, we thought that uh, well people with disability could now sit down and do anything from home and uh, don't need to too much uh, support. Course they can work by by their own home and they don't have to go away if you're sitting in a wheelchair you, you don't have to leave your home and so on um but that was wrong in the 90s and that's yeah. wrong now also because yeah. people need to to uh, be in an environment with other people uh and i can i, I can see that discussions now in, in the same way because uh Everything has changed with the computers, but if you look at the the target group people with severe disabilities, they have the same unemployment rate that they had in the nineties. So yeah. we haven't changed anything for the people with disabilities. the 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 environment have changed, and and the technical age has changed, but they are still still. I, I, I think pushing that boulder of really has so long to go. Yeah. And, and I slightly disagree with you. I think, yes, statistically, it still has this yeah. terrible and, and employment rate. But I think some of the systems are getting better. I like the fact in the UK and in other countries, supported internships are starting. I've been crying about that since the 1990s, that we had to work with young people to try and stop them becoming unemployed. I do think we need to get our collective heads together about how the world has changed. Yeah. Um, I think there's a good possibility of potentially having support areas for, for, for people so that if instead of working from home, if they want that socialization, that they can have that in a in a innovative, more social enterprise way. Um, and I think it's trying to mix that economy, but it, we 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 have to do better for our candidate group, and 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 that that's not just from our sector, but it's also from politicians and for commissioners, and to li and 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 the main plea from me is to listen to people with disabilities themselves. Yeah. They have the answers, not 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 all, not us. Yeah. yeah, but we also have seen. Uh, uh, with the, the, uh, the digital uh, technical development that uh, actually young people with severe mental illness could be uh, have a what should I say they, they had a, uh, the first meeting with a job coach via their computers because then it's much easier for them to talk to people when you sit home. Yeah. So the first connection with, with the, that target group with the severe mental illness, young people with severe mental illness, has been very positive if you use yeah. the computer. I, I think there's been some yeah. real positives out of COVID about how we've actually changed the yes. workplace. Yes. We should use those adaptiveness uh, in the right way. We've been doing some work in status on virtual reality, and yeah. it's been very interesting. We now create our own scenarios and it's been very interesting with how effective it has been for neurodiverse uh, people where they've actually realized that actually they can visit a workplace before they even start to build their confidence. Yeah. And I think there are some things that we need to work with to make it more inclusive again and keep it inclusive. Yeah. And, and so everything with, uh, with the, the technical development is not bad because there is something that we can do together and 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 I also have seen uh, we had uh, some companies in Sweden that have had uh, started up to, with a method uh, technical aid on a, on a computer that is quite interesting actually 
Mm. There you can there you get feedback as a job coach uh, on your phone or on your computer in what you are doing and what step you have to take next. And, and that is something that I think would be uh, would be an opportunity for us to work more with included the technical. Yeah, I think, I think we've got to embrace the technology, yeah. but actually make sure it's inclusive and make mm. sure it's inclusive for people with disabilities to help yeah. them get yeah. valued jobs that they want to do and not just be pigeonholed into the jobs that they think that they should, that, that the politicians think that they are either just capable of or, or they should do. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of politicians need to think about their language. Yeah. Um I'm just quickly going back to European Union supported employment. You 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 downplay your role. I mean, you 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 were vice president for many years, and you were in, in at the heart of the board. And and I th I think you should be proud of many of the achievements that you did, certainly back in 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 the two thousands and 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 the teens, but also the legacy that you created because. You know, after you left, your your colleague Bertel Johansson joined from Sweden, and I and I think you put Sweden at the heart of the EUSE supported employment, and and I think you should be very proud of that because the achievements that we have today, I think, have been a carry on from right at the beginning, the quality standards, the SEQF, all of those. Or some of all of the, of the parts, and, and I think it's something that you, you you should actually take some sort of credit for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm proud of that work because I was from the beginning when we started talking about the toolkit. I, I think it was in a meeting in Barcelona. Actually, we sat down in, in small groups and started to discuss, and, and and it took, I think. It, nearly two years for the first example of the toolkit which was from uh, Mike Evans who was the president of yeah. that time so Mike Evans from Scotland so um, uh, we worked a lot with it yeah I think it was in Athens or something like that wasn't yeah it? I think that the one in Barcelona you remember is a precursor to the toolkit it was yeah. a quality standard that we worked on and that gave Mike that the, the great idea to use. At that time, it was a, a European mobilization type of funding that allowed yeah. us to create the toolkit that was with 14 members. And that that, that took some organizing. And, and apart from just forgiving you for putting me in a shopping center in uh, between Stockholm and somewhere else, uh, yeah. For for two days to complete this toolkit, uh, yeah, yeah. where we were allowed, allowed out for I think one night for to drink beers and eat prawns, um, I think it was really really good work um, that that was done, and that toolkit then I think spurred on the other things to do with the toolkit for diversity for the changes, and also for the um, toolkit in self employment as well as the SEQF, and I, and I think. That is the way it's going, and and you might be pleased to know is that um, the uh, with uh, GTB and EUSE are now part of a employment um, employer engagement, uh, and that's going to be looking at training and the small toolkit toolkit there, um, which again is funded by the uh, European Union, uh, yeah. which I think is again going to be something that I think you will be very pleased about when it comes out. Yeah, I, I am actually, and, uh, and you are still at the board, I think, in in the EU. Yeah, um, I, 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 whatever I am, still useful. I will, yeah. I will carry on working. Um, I, I'm, I'm still a little younger than you, only a little younger than you, and 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 um, I, and and part of what I'm trying to do is, is make sure we keep a little bit of the history. Talk to people like yourself and other people who've been part of the board, but also keep the passion going. And, and you know, the passion that I got from you when I first met you and the passion I got from uh, all of your colleagues and some of the other people, I, I, I want to keep that going. And, and 
as I say, whilst I still have some use and 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 Luke and Karen and Edith and, and all the people feel I will be of use as a vice president, then then I'll carry on working for you, sir, while ever that that is the case. So yes, I'm I'm not going just yet. <laughs> Yeah, and that's interesting because I, I, as I told you from the beginning, I am the chair of the work integration social enterprises, and suddenly I am at the the other side of the table when we meet in the public employment service. <laughs> You're on my side of the table now. Yeah, I am. So I'm, I maybe I have quite... to teach you the 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 poacher turned gamekeeper type things to do. Yeah, so it's quite interesting because. All the people, most of the people from the, the public employment service knows who I am. So they are actually a little bit embarrassed over what they are saying sometimes. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to be on the other side. Oh, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Ben, it's been great talking to you. Thank I you. Enjoyed it's it. to, yeah, I, I have. And I, I wish you all the good luck in the future. And, and I-